Well, it's great to be back. I took a little bit of a much needed break, feeling a little bit under the weather, feeling a lot better now. Get back to the regular schedule of programming. Of course, I got a whole stable of laptops ready to be reviewed. First up is the Dell XPS 13 2-in-1, the follow-up to last year's premium convertible, one of the best we reviewed last year, and I couldn't wait to get my hands on it. So Dell sent it over, I've been putting it through its paces, and it's really impressive. What I like about it is the fact that they've upgraded it to the 11th gen Tiger Lake processor. It also has integrated XE graphics, a definite improvement over the integrated Iris Plus graphics from last year. Throw in a gorgeous Full HD Plus resolution, a 16 to 10 aspect ratio, all day battery life, and I think Dell has a winner on their hands. Hey everybody, it's Andrew, and this is my review of the Dell XPS 13 2-in-1, 9310 all new here for late 2020. Coming up. Want to see more videos like this? Why not hit that subscribe button and make sure you hit that notification bell. This way you'll be alerted every time I upload a new video and make sure you follow me on my social media, especially Twitter and Instagram. It's on those platforms I post a lot of the updates. And today's video is brought to you by all the members who contributed this month to the channel. Want to become a member? Hit that join button below. And in the interest of transparency and full disclosure, I'm not being paid by Dell. I'm not being sponsored by Dell. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own, and no one is seeing this video before its release. This review unit is on loan from Dell, and once this review is done, I'll be sending it back. You can pick up the Dell XPS 13 2-in-1 starting price $1,099. My review unit comes in at $1549.99. I'll put the latest pricing and where you can buy it in the link below. And with specs and pricing out of the way, let's find out what you get inside the box. Let's open it up. Now, the packaging, of course, is very premium, as we've come to expect with the XPS line. This is no exception. Lifting the lid, you're greeted by the unit itself, and we'll get to that in just a little bit. Of course, you get some documentation, which includes some warranty information and a setup guide. And once again, Dell does a really nice job presenting you the accessories in the box. We'll start off with that 45 watt USB-C power adapter. It also comes with an extension cord. You get a USB-A to USB-C adapter, which of course you'll need with this laptop. We'll get into that in just a little bit. And of course, the unit itself. Now holding it for the first time, very premium, very high end. As we saw with the 9310, the clamshell design I recently reviewed, this is no exception. And at 2.9 pounds or 1.32 kilograms, very thin and light, easy to take with you on the go. Now, most of the changes from last year's version occur under the hood. What we now have is an 11th gen Intel Core i7-1165G7. We also have Intel Iris Xe graphics with shared graphics memory. Of course, that's a bump over the Intel Iris Plus graphics. And we now have two Thunderbolt 4 ports that support data, charge, and display out. That is definitely an upgrade over the Thunderbolt 3. And yes, this is Intel's Tiger Lake processor based on the Intel Evo platform, meaning it's certified that it has a certain minimum amount of specs that it had to meet. And that's pretty good so far with all the other laptops we've seen based on this platform. Now, Dell sent me the version with the platinum silver with the carbon fiber interior. I absolutely love this. And I also love the Arctic white with the woven glass interior that we took a look at with the clamshell version, the 9310 that I recently reviewed. Now, one thing to note, past versions of this carbon fiber deck were major fingerprint magnets. This is not so much the case as they use a different coating on this. You see it much less, although you will notice some fingerprints not quite as bad as past iterations. It does have a glass touchpad, a precision touchpad that is very responsive. Two finger scrolling is buttery smooth. All the Windows 10 gestures work as advertised. I think they did a really nice job with that touchpad. And once again, Dell went with the maglev keyboard on their two-in-one. That was the same we saw last year. It's a bit on the shallow side, of course, more akin to the 12-inch MacBook we saw in the past, and some people won't like it. Now, I do prefer the better keyboard, in my opinion, on the clamshell version of the 9310 that I recently reviewed. Now, having said that, this is definitely an improvement over last year's version. I just think it's still a bit on the shallow side, but you will get used to it, and it will be fine for most people, but some people will prefer a more traditional style keyboard. 
And as we always do, let's check out the port selection. Let's start off on the left side. We get a Thunderbolt 4 port that does data, charge, display out. Thunderbolt 4 will support up to one 8K monitor or two 4K monitors. You also get a micro SD card slot for storage expansion. Moving over to the right side, a second Thunderbolt 4 port and a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. That's it. There's no USB-A port. They do give you a USB-A to USB-C dongle in the box. Now, when it comes to user upgradability, well, a little bit of bad news here. Unlike the clamshell version where you can upgrade the SSD, this one you cannot access the SSD as well as the RAM or the Wi-Fi card. They're all not accessible to the user and therefore they're not upgradable, which is a negative in my book, of course, if you've seen any of my reviews. Now, of course, one of the highlights of this two-in-one is its 13.4-inch Infinity Edge touch display. It is simply superb. Now, this has a full HD plus resolution. That's 1920 by 1200, but it is available in a UHD plus resolution. That's 3840 by 2400. Might be overkill, especially if you want better battery life. I really like this full HD plus version. We got some really deep black, some very vibrant colors, excellent contrast, really good viewing angles, and it does have really good color accuracy. And it covers the color gamut really well. 96% sRGB, 73% Adobe RGB, 73% of the DCI P3 wide color gamut, and 67% NTSC, making this a very good choice for those content creators that do Lightroom, Photoshop, and of course, video editing. Now, one of the best parts of this display is how bright it gets, especially if you turn off the adaptive brightness in the Intel Graphics Command Center. And I got to say, one of the brightest, sharpest displays out there on the market. That's what I saw with the 9310 clamshell. This is no exception here with the two-in-one really bright, sharp, crisp display. I think Dell did an excellent job. And you're going to love the Infinity Edge display with those really micro-thin bezels giving off a really modern look. I really like the way this comes off. So this is the front face camera on the all new Dell XPS 13 2 in 1 9310 here late 2020 and uh, 720p 30 frames per second webcam infrared webcam meaning you can log in with face recognition via Windows hello good for zoom good for Skype let me know how it looks let me know how it sounds I am curious to know now, when it comes to performance, pretty much on par what we saw with the Dell XPS 13 9310, which I recently reviewed. This, of course, has the same processor, same amount of RAM, type of RAM, and you see it here with this integrated XE graphics, a definite bump over the integrated Iris Plus graphics from last year's 10th gen, and you definitely see them with the performance with the PC Mark 10, which is a good indicator of everyday use. Now, when it comes to gaming, again, if you put it on low settings, you can definitely get playable frame rates, games such as GT. GTA 5, The Witcher 3, Dota 2, you get the picture playable frame rates much better than last year's integrated graphics. So this is definitely an improvement if you're coming from the 10th gen to the 11th gen in terms of graphics performance. Now, when it comes to thermals, this thin and light design, of course, will have to thermal throttle when it gets too hot in order to make sure that it doesn't overheat. And therefore, the clock speed will be reduced on this laptop. And that's typical of any thin and light laptop. It will start to get a little bit warm on the bottom when you're doing things such as gaming or intensive tasks. You will notice that buildup of heat on the bottom. That's, again, typical of any thin and light laptop. Not too terrible. You will notice the fans will kick in under heavy load, but not too obnoxious, not too loud and that's pretty good. And one area I'm really impressed with is battery life. That's thanks to that 51 watt hour battery that this has. It did 11 hours and three minutes on my continuous web surfing test over Wi-Fi at 150 nits. That translates into all day battery life for everyday use. And that's something we like to see. It even outpaced the Dell XPS 13 9310. So this is something that we'd like to see with our laptops. All day battery life is something we want to see. Now, as far as charging, it took less than two hours for a full charge with the included 45 watt USB-C power adapter. That's pretty good. Now, one of the benefits of being a two-in-one convertible is you can put it into the different modes. Here, it's intent mode, great for recipes in the kitchen, consuming media, same as we see here with the stand mode. And of course, you can put it into tablet mode. This makes for a great tablet, although at almost three pounds, not the lightest or thinnest in that category. However, you can use it in tablet mode with the pen. Now, the Dell didn't include a pen with this. I have tried it with a number of pens and it worked pretty well. Now, of course, you don't need to use the pen. You can use your finger to navigate through the OS. I found the responsive touchscreen very good in that regard really nice and responsive 
Now, when it comes to the audio, it has bottom firing speakers, and I thought it was impressive, filling up a room rather nicely, decent volume, decent mids, and a hint of bass. Not too bad for a very thin and light laptop. I was impressed with these speakers. Okay, let's wrap it all up. What do I think of the Dell XPS 13 2 in 1 9310 here for late 2020? And I absolutely love it, although I'm not in love with that maglev keyboard. Again, last year they went with the maglev keyboard. It's improved this year, but still not as good as the traditional clamshell 9310 keyboard that we recently reviewed. Now, I love the absolutely gorgeous, stunning 13.4 inch Full HD Plus Infinity Edge display. It's a nice touch display. I like that 16 to 10 aspect ratio for getting work done. It's also great for consuming media. The integrated XE graphics are a definite boost over the integrated Iris Plus graphics from last year. Throw in some impressive speakers and all-day battery life, and Dell has another winner on their hand. I'm definitely going to give this my editor's choice for the two-in-one convertible category. When it comes to the 13-inch laptops, this is one of the best out there. And once again, Dell has come through and hit a home run here in late 2020. So what do you think about this bad boy, the XPS 13 2 in 1 9310 here for late 2020? All metal design, really premium build, of course. 2.9 pounds or 1.32 kilograms. Not the lightest out there, but definitely premium feeling in the hand. It's also light enough and thin enough to take with you on the go, so no worries in that regard. Now, Dell didn't send me the pen, but I did test a number of pens with it. It worked well, great for taking notes, sketching out artwork. Negatives, of course, only two USB-C ports. They're Thunderbolt 4 ports, a definite improvement over the capabilities of the Thunderbolt 3, so it's good to see that. They do give you a USB-A to USB-C dongle in the box, so that is a nice little touch, but yes, lack of ports is definitely something to consider. Now, the other negative, of course, is user upgradability. Unlike the Clamshell 9310 that I recently reviewed, you can't upgrade the SSD. Now, of course, you can't upgrade the RAM or the uh, Wi-Fi card on this. They are soldered into the motherboard, not accessible to the user. So that is something to keep in mind, but a little bit of a negative in my book, but not too much of a deal breaker for most people. Gorgeous 13.4 inch Full HD Plus Infinity Edge display. Absolutely gorgeous with its micro thin bezels. Gets super bright, over 500 nits as I showed you in the video. So really not a lot to complain here. I think Dell has hit another home run with this. I like what they bring to the table. It looks great. It sounds great with the nice bottom facing speakers. Uh, really, really good stuff here. But I'm curious to know what you think. Let me know in the comment section below. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.